Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things Bolt Action. And before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Jamie Warren for sending in some awesome pictures of his US Marine Corps. Let's go, Devil Dogs! I absolutely love this colour scheme. It looks really, really cool. You can see, like, the uniforms are wet and just drenched through from that tropical heat and humidity. Looks really, really cool. Although there is a suspicious futuristic-looking vehicle in the background supporting these US Marines. I don't remember that being there during Okinawa, but I could have been wrong. Mass thank you, James, for this picture. They look absolutely fantastic. If anyone else has got any cool pictures of what we choose in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or you can email them to me at morningglorytv at gmail.com. And don't worry if you're a Soviet tank driver that hasn't received his mandatory three hours of training yet, there will be links and Facebook pages down in the description below. Without further ado, let's take a look at today's video. Now today guys, I want to do a beginner tactics video for bolt action and I want to talk about snipers. You see, a lot of people online say that snipers are like a mandatory unit for most bolt action armies and I have to disagree. I dropped using snipers very early on in my bolt action career when I identified that they didn't ever really seem to achieve a huge amount on the battlefield. So what I want to talk about today guys is why I don't like snipers and what you are able to do to counter them effectively like I do now if you encounter them on the battlefield. So the first thing to talk about is what does the sniper do? Well, it's a unique unit. It sits in its own little slot, the sniper slot, and most factions get access to a two-man sniper team. Now, they tend to cost 50 points regular or 65 points veteran. You can't take them in experience. You've got to have at least some kind of training to be a sniper, even in the Soviet army. I think Vasily Zaitsev might have just rolled over in his grave after that statement was made. But <laughs> beside that, what you get for your 50 to 65 points is a single shot weapon. Now, the sniper always hits on a 3+, plus regardless of terrain modifiers, which is very good. Although I believe if you do stack pins on him, he does begin to start hitting on less than a 3+. plus. Now, in a game where terrain modifiers are everywhere, having a unit that hits on a 3+, plus sounds fantastic on paper. Like, oh yeah, I'm always going to hit on a 3+. plus. But bear in mind, it's a one-shot weapon, but we'll come back to that in a second. The sniper also always does exceptional damage, which is what makes many people think he's an auto-include in most lists, because they say if he's able to get a hit and then a wound on something like a mortar team or a heavy machine gun team or medium machine gun team, he kills the whole unit. It doesn't matter if there is six men crewing that team weapon or two men crewing that team weapon, it doesn't matter sniper always does exceptional damage and if you're firing as a team weapon that isn't artillery then you always pick it up okay which is makes a sniper very very powerful when shooting at things like mortars or bazooka teams or medium machine gun teams however there is a key key weakness to the sniper he doesn't have a to wound modifier so if he's killing an experienced people sure he's going to kill them on a three plus but if he's wounding regular people it's a four plus and that's a coin flip. And considering you're already on a coin flip to hit almost, you know, you're on a three plus, but maybe some pins on him could become a four plus quite easily. But then you've got a four plus to kill. Look, I've been in a situation where a sniper has fired every single turn of the game, has hit many of those turns, and has just never got that four plus. It's just never managed to pick that that machine gun team up. It just sometimes it just happens. OK, and believe me, it happens more often than you think. Statistically, it should happen 50% of the time, but I have seen it, more. maybe it's just my machine gun guys are particularly good at ducking out of sniper rounds, I don't know. But I can count on one hand across the three or four dozen games about action that I've had at this point, I can count on one time when a sniper, on one hand, when a sniper has effectively picked up a medium machine gun team or something similar, okay? It just, if you play against that, if you just play into them and you counter them, they just don't do it. Now, you might also say, oh, well, if there's no medium machine guns in the field, like let's say you just... You don't build your list with that and you take spotters for your mortar so yeah maybe they kill the spot but the mortar can fire up line of sight whilst the spot is around you might be like ah well i can pick out lmgs it's like okay but the problem you're then going to start encountering is a lot of people take their line infantry as veterans and that means your sniper is only wounding these things on a five plus now maybe it's just my meta but i tend to find that over the course of a bolt action player's lifetime they tend to go towards more veteran armies because Veterans in cover, if you don't have HE, they're incredibly difficult to dig out, okay? They're just so durable. And so, 
what you find is if you've got your sniper plinking away, yeah, maybe he's hitting on a three every time, but now he's only got a 33% chance, a one in three chance he's going to kill that LMG. And if you're facing someone like Japanese, they just don't care if you pick out the sergeant because they're just going to banzai anyway. And if you're facing Germans and they haven't got any LMGs, well, that's unlikely. But let's say you pick out an LMG from a squad and you go to snipe the next guy. It's like, oh, pick out the sergeant. They don't care. They have initiative training. So I tend to find that Allied snipers shooting into sort of the main Axis factions, they don't have as good targets as they want to have, okay? Because most German players are going to have their machine guns on their tanks, and if they do have LMGs in their squads, they're going to be double LMG veteran squads, which are really, really powerful. So this is the problem I have with snipers, which on paper, they look great. But, and maybe when two beginners are playing each other, the sniper will feel powerful. But very quickly... The players are going to start working out ways of countering snipers. And one of the simplest, most cost-effective ways of dealing with a sniper is by taking a light artillery piece. Okay, The light artillery piece costs the same as the sniper, but it can't be wiped out by exceptional damage. And the sniper might be a small target in hard cover, plinking away from that church tower. The light howitzer doesn't care. It's just going to lob indirect fire. It's just going to dial in. And then if it's like, oh, well, then I'll move my sniper. It's like, great, you can't move and use the sniper scope. So if I have to spend 50 points taking like a regular artillery piece to take out, you know, to counter your 65 point veteran sniper, then I'm winning. Because either you're going to keep moving him, at which point I'm just... I'm just stopping him from doing his job and my infantry can then move freely or you leave him there and I blow him up or I just get lucky and get a six to hit. I'm sure we've all been there. Any experienced but actual player will tell you that how many games have opened up with a light howitzer or a medium mortar just first dice of the game. I'm going to roll to see if I hit, get a six. Happens all the time. You just get that six. It's just it's the, the nature of the beast. It's just a universal action. People just get sixes just for their first HE shot. It just seems to happen. Okay? And so your sniper very quickly is either being neutralized because he's dead or he's being neutralized because he's running around not able to use his scope. Now, I know I'm ragging on the snipers a lot at the moment. And look, I have learned through bitter experience on just how to counter them on an extinctive level. But if you're playing against a sniper the first time, it can be one of the most damaging units and it can be one of the most powerful. And you might think, I need a sniper, they are really overpowered. But once you just get into that mindset of being able to counter them, they really stop becoming that scary. And I guess that's really the true power of the sniper is that when you actually look at the maths on it, it's not that likely to do that much damage, especially if it's facing against a veteran army. It's going to, out of the six turns that you play in an average by action game, it's going to hit with four of them, and out of those four, statistically, it should get one kill. Okay, that's actually the maths behind a sniper into a veteran unit, okay? One, maybe two kills. You know, that's an LMG and maybe a sergeant over the course of a game. Which is okay, but it's not a huge amount of damage, but the main thing is that they're a psychological weapon. The sniper tends to go down as part of like forward deployment and whatnot, which means everything else gets deployed and then the sniper goes down, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is it means that whilst your opponent is deploying his units, he's got in the back of his head, okay, where's that sniper going to go? Where's that problem going to go? Where do I put my MMG team? Where do I put my anti-tank rifle team? Where do I put my panzer team? Where do I put all this stuff, right? And so you will be messing with your opponent's deployment. And I guess the bigger strength of snipers is an annoyance slash harassment unit that will occasionally like pick up something and it won't go thanks to exceptional damage. OK, but most of the time snipers don't do that. OK, but they certainly have a place in an army if you're willing to just sort of mess with your opponent, you know, keep him off balance. But if you're the kind of person that has played in snipers a long time, you don't really suffer from those psychological effects anymore. If you're a 40k player who's coming over to bot action, the way you could think of snipers is they're like a microcosm of like Gene Stiller Cult, okay? Gene Stiller Cult are really cool, and when you haven't played them before, or you've not played them many times before, they can really catch you off guard with all their tricks and their shenanigans and their crazy stuff, right? But once you've played them a few times, you get the measure of them, and they're fairly easy to counter. That's kind of how it works with snipers. Once you've got the measure of them, they're fairly easy to counter. 
But that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you use snipers? Do you just cannot contemplate leaving home without your sniper on your list? Or are you like me where you're like, I'd rather take something else over a sniper instead? Let me know down in that comment section below. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe and a comment. To be honest, guys, any extra interactivity you can give this video gives it a massive boost on the all-knowing but yet very mysterious YouTube algorithm. It knows everything about us, but we know very little about it. But what we do know is that any extra interactivity gives this video a big old boost to Rooney. And I'd be eternally grateful if you could consider giving it a like, a subscribe, and all that good stuff. Now, if you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more bolt action content on this channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to the very generous support of my channel members, of my patrons, that I'm able to cover more game systems than just Warhammer 40k now, and I'm able to do bot action as a regular segment on this channel. In fact, Bot Action is probably growing to be as equally popular on this channel as my 40k content. And that is thanks to channel members and Patreon supporters being able to support me and allowing me to do this content on a regular basis. So massive thank you to all of my channel members. Massive thank you to all of my Patreons. And I want to take a moment now to go through the latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So thank you to Nuki Brown, William Hale, Kevin B, Def Noise Marine, Ricky Brown, Homie Lug, Matt 2001, Silver Prepper, and Furry Curry for becoming channel members. Thank you guys for doing your part. And also a big thank you to the latest Patreon supporters as well. So thank you to Jack Pascal, Stuart Francis, Harvey Hansen, Hans Anderson, Philip French, Garth Vader and Andrew for becoming channel Patreon supporters. Your support is absolutely fantastic. Thank you guys. Now last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal heartfelt thank you to every single one of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the guys that have truly, truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the Mordian Glory channel and I am forever grateful to their generosity. These are the people that have signed up at the War Master level of Mordian Glory Patreon support, the top tier. So I wanna say a personal thank you to Navy Veteran, Philip French, Alex Stengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Ross Miller, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Thank you guys. Honestly, your support is just incredible. There's no other word for it. It's just amazing. So guys, from the bottom of my heart, and I mean this, thank you. It means the world to me. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.